Some things just work perfectly together. Batman and Robin, Doritos and Mountain Dew, guns and chainsaws, Transformers and Linkin Park. So give me reason to prove me wrong. If you haven't seen the 2007 cinematic masterpiece that is Transformers, then you have no doubt at least seen this scene. Setting Optimus Prime's speech at sunset soundtracked by Linkin Park as the closing scene of the film is arguably one of the coolest endings to any movie ever. Period. I mean, the execution of this scene is so flawless that there was a trend of re-scoring famous movie endings with Linkin Park's certified classic What I've Done in an attempt to make other films half as cool as Michael Bay's kick-ass 2007 flick. Hello there. Linkin Park and Transformers have quite a substantial history together that started with the band providing their 2007 single, What I Have Done, for use in the 2007 Transformers film. In doing so, they helped create the most memorable scene in the film. They also did an excellent cover of the Transformers theme song. This working relationship continued with Linkin Park releasing their single, New Divide. A song that was written and recorded for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen in 2009. This time the band even assisted Steve Jablonski with scoring the film. The band would go on to provide one more song for the Transformers films, ending their collaboration by providing their 2010 single, Iridescent, for use in Transformers Dark of the Moon in 2011. The band did also provide their 2014 single, Until It's Gone, for use in the launch trailer for the 2014 Transformers game, That Shall Not Be Named. Unfortunately, this piece of marketing for a piece of shit game was the last time Transformers and Linkin Park would collaborate. Shitty video game trailers aside, Linkin Park's work in helping to score Michael Bay's original Transformers trilogy has now forever cemented the band into Transformers history. The Linkin Park and Transformers relationship is real and I love it. But this relationship didn't just involve the band providing music for the franchise. In 2013, as part of the celebration for the 30th anniversary of the Robots in Disguise, Linkin Park's Johan collaborated closely with Hasbro's designers to create a Linkin Park Transformers figure. The result of this collaboration was this. It's a gold generation 1 sound wave with a Linkin Park logo. Yay! The Transformers Linkin Park Soundwave Special Edition is a gold and black redeco of the original Generation 1 Soundwave mold from the 80s. He is packaged in exclusive Transformers and Linkin Park packaging and comes with Buzzsaw, Laserbeak, Ravage, and Ratbat. Again, these are all the Generation 1 molds, but with the new sexy gold redeco. He also comes with a concussion blaster, rocket launcher, and three rockets that, you guessed it, are also gold. He also comes with four tape cassettes for his minions, which are also got. Uh, uh, oh, no, wait, they're just clear plastic. That's disappointing. Oh, yeah, and he also comes with the little blaster accessories for his minions, which are. Oh, fuck yeah, that's the good stuff. Aside from Soundwave getting the gold finger treatment, the only other major change is that there is a Tampo Graft Linkin Park logo on his chest and the Decepticon insignia on his leg. Otherwise, he has no other decals or stickers, so he is almost literally just a blank Generation 1 Soundwave mold painted gold. We happy?
Vincent! We happy? Yeah, we happy. The figure was only released once on October 3rd in 2013 and was exclusively available at the music store Suru, a chain owned by Linkin Park's own Joseph Hahn, which has since shut down. Additionally, the figure was limited to 2,000 pieces and retailed at 150 US dollars. Right off the bat, the packaging definitely sells this figure as a premium collector's item. It's a perfect blend of the Linkin Park and Soundwave aesthetic, and it has some really nice artwork and display features. Arguably, it's the most creative element of the figure, and it's clear that most of the work for this guy went into the packaging. He's even packaged in purple felt coated plastic. Come on, at this point, you're paying for the premium packaging. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. You poor excuse for a sound system. All talk, no shock. As for the figure itself, it is a redecoed reissue of the original Generation 1 Soundwave. The only point of difference with this figure as compared to the original toy is that he is obviously painted gold and he comes packaged with all four of his cassette minions, where originally three of them were sold separately. Additionally, the storage cases for the four cassettes are unique to this release, as far as I know. I don't really have much to say about the figure itself. It's just a Generation 1 Soundwave. It has all the same play features, and it's been stripped of any decals, save for the Linkin Park logo and the Decepticon insignia, which I'll admit are super cool. But I don't even think the gold color looks very nice, and it doesn't scream Linkin Park to me personally. He looks like something a rapper would wear on a gold chain around his neck. <laughs> Two chains! This isn't a figure that you play with and pose. You buy it, keep it in the box, and proudly display it like a piece of art on your shelf. The packaging is super well done, the figure definitely stands out, and giving Soundwave, the music player bot, a Linkin Park makeover is definitely on brand. While I don't think the figure is amazing, I do love the package as a whole, and as a fan of both Transformers and Linkin Park, I think this is a great piece for collector's purposes. Considering that Transformers collaborations often give birth to entirely new molds and figures, the fact that Linkin Park only got to release a redeco Generation 1 mold is a little disappointing. But this figure's very limited release does make it a little more special. Despite only 2,000 figures of this guy existing, there are plenty being sold on eBay. Although for this much money, you would be far better off spending this kind of cash on a masterpiece sound wave. This figure hasn't seen a re-release, and listings for the figure on sites like Big Bad Toy Store and TF Source are reselling sealed figures from the original 2000 figure batch. If you don't already have it, it's a questionable purchase at its current resale price. This figure is now reserved for financially irresponsible Linkin Park and Transformers fans. How do three men in their 30s not have $800 between them? They're... The it's economy a, is in oh shambles. Right. Taking the, the uh, closest the marketplace death. right now. now oh, the Linkin Park and Transformers relationship was a beautiful thing. It gave us cinematic scenes that stick with us to this day, and it helped a lot of people discover the musical genius of Linkin Park. Letting the band create their own Transformer was the crowning achievement of this relationship, and I believe it's a symbol that represents a cherished era of my life, and I'm sure it represents the same thing for a lot of you as well. I hope you guys all learned something today. Did you know this figure existed? Do you have one? If so, put your full legal name and address in the comments below just so I can come look at it. I promise I definitely won't steal- Please don't put your name or address in the comments. Keep your private information off of the internet. Brave Blade Productions does not engage in or support the practice of harvesting private personal information off of the internet. All jokes aside, where are my Linkin Park and Transformers fans at? If you are either, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get the channel to 1,000 subs so I can use the ad revenue money to buy the Transformers Linkin Park Soundwave. Until the next video, guys. Stay safe, stay happy, and stay healthy.